Welcome back. In the last video, we got a very basic idea of how to navigate around uh, Autodesk 123D design. And in this video, we're going to look at the objects themselves, how to move them on the platform, how to resize them, and how to rotate them. So these are the three objects that you saw from the last video. And one thing I want you to take note of is what happens when you bring a new object onto the platform. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bring, uh, this is an interesting uh, primitive here called a torus or a donut. I'm going to click on a donut and notice that as I move it across the screen, at the bottom of the screen, you will see options for different things about this object. So highlighted in, in the very bottom is the major radius section. And now obviously this section changes based on the shape. So what if I said something like major radius is 20? And I hit my tab key on my keyboard and I change the minor radius to something like 10. Okay. So the major radius then seems to indicate the distance um, from here to here, and the minor radius is the distance inside from here to here. That makes sense. So that's manipulating a torus. Let me do the same thing. If I bring in a cylinder, or uh, since we haven't done a cone yet, let me bring in a cone, and I put it on the platform. And now this has radius and height. So radius of 25, uh, height of 30, Okay, and I confirm all these changes by just clicking on the object. And there I have my different shapes that I've resized upon entry. Once you've brought an object onto the platform, however, you could also make changes by just clicking on them once, and you get this sort of menu of choices. One of them is to move the object around, one of them is to scale the object in terms of size, and that could be a scale change completely, or what they call uniform scale change, or it could be a scale change in a certain direction, and we'll talk about that. You could also hide it from the platform, and you can change its material look and, and feel. So let's uh, take a look at these one at a time. So if I click on my, on my cube, I'm going to look at the Move tool. If I click on it, take a look here. I've got a few different things. Um, I have this ability to move it up and down, back and forth, left and right. I guess it all depends on where you're viewing it from in terms of what that actually means. The other thing that you'll see is right above each of those arrows, or I should say right in front of each of those arrows, you have this little circle and that's the ability to rotate the object along that particular plane. Uh, X, Y, and Z planes become very relevant when it comes to 3D printing as we'll see later. I could just move the object along the different planes. You actually also have this other object here. This, for this particular shape, it looks like that tool just allows us to move along multiple planes as we're moving it around. Very interesting. Okay, and there's my object sitting above the plane. Once again, movement, rotation, and then this looks like more subtle movement. Yeah, so I've got up and down ability with that, that particular tool. I'm going to click on another object, get those same properties here down at the bottom, and let's choose scale this time. So if I click on scale, I can do a uniform scale growth. So let's say, for example, I want to grow this by a factor of 2. It just makes everything bigger. But if I wanted to do a non-uniform growth, 
I could change the z factor by 5, but notice that the x and y have not changed. Okay? x and y have not changed. And by the way, I can just take these manually and I can adjust them as well. The one difference about doing that, though, is you start to lose uh, proportionality with here. So your numbers can get very skewed. Um, I could also, I could always go back in and just type 1, 1, and 1. And it will take me back. Okay. The other thing I wanted to make note of at this point is some of our navigation. Uh, we want to refine our navigation a little bit by using uh, the viewing tools here on the, on the right-hand side. If I were to click on, I think earlier in the other video, I told you about holding down your scroll button on your mouse, your scroll wheel. If you click here, it does the same thing. So I can, I can pan just by using this tool. And I can orbit. This allows me to set the, the focal point of my rotation. So let's say that I wanted to revolve around just the torus. I would click on orbit. It brings up my target. I move my target over here. And now I'm orbiting around the torus. So depending on where your orbit is, it changes your your focus, right? So now I'm orbiting around the cube. Um, and then fit allows you to, uh, it gives the ideal uh, view of all objects on the screen. So it just fits them to the screen, okay? We'll have to investigate zoom. I'm not quite sure. I guess that's just it's similar to the scroll wheel. Once you click on it, it gives you just up and down, and I can just hold my mouse button up and down and zoom in and out. So that's all that that's doing. Okay, so that's moving, resizing, and rotating.